Trinity. Welcome to Beit Yehwa, House of Praise for All Nations. And I'm very excited to share with you today a little word on the Trinity, the Tri-Unity, the concept of the fact that the Godhead consists of three persons in one God. And I'm, I'm very excited to share this because this is one of the most interesting subjects around, you know. There are a lot of people out there who, I, I, I've had a lot of interesting comments over the years. And For example, <laughs> I had some Jewish friends in Israel and one of them said, I haven't got a, I'm a Jew, I have not got a Trinitarian bone in my body. Somehow he was under the impression that the idea that the Godhead, is both plural with the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and yet at the same time a unity or well, somehow non-biblical or somehow this idea came from outside of the Bible outside of the Word of God and, and from some other source but I'm very glad to be able to share with you today that the idea of plurality in the Godhead the idea of the unity of the Godhead having a plurality within it is comes straight out of the Hebrew Bible. Amen? So we're going to look today at this idea of Trinity. First we have to establish the plurality in God. Amen? Now, if we go to the beginning of the Holy Scriptures in Hebrew, we begin with uh, Genesis 1-1 or Bereshit 1-1. And the first verse reads so. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim va et haaretz. Now this is the beginning of the Torah. This is the beginning of the Tanakh. This is the beginning of the revelation of God, Yahweh, to mankind. And he begins with Bereshit. When in the beginning, or in the beginning, be in reshit, beginning, bara, he created Elohim, et hashemayim, et haaretz. Now that's my alarm going off, I'm going to have to turn that off before we continue. Now, what has this got to do with Trinity? With the triune idea, the word Trinity doesn't come up in the Bible at all. And it upsets a lot of people that it's not in there. But the fact of the matter is that none of the English words in your modern English Bible come up in the Bible at all. Why? Because the Bible was written in Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. So, obviously, the words weren't there. But the concept of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being one God and yet three persons is very clearly delineated in the Bible. And so therefore, even though the word itself may not be there, the substance which is behind the word, which is what actually counts at the end of the day, is there. We began with the first verse of the Bible. Bereshit. Bara elo. Him. Now, the first letter, we're going to look at this a little bit Kabbalistically, just for the Jewish Kabbalists out there. The first letter, which begins the entire Bible, is the letter Bet. Now, Bet, according to the Kabbalists, uh, Solomon ben Meir, means, refers to the sun. Sun in Hebrew is Ben, sun in Aramaic is Bar. So we have here a pointing to the sun. But the second letter of the Bible is Resh. Resh refers to the spirit, Ruach. So we have the first two letters of the Bible have two persons, point to, as an acronym, two persons of the Trinity, Ben, Ruach. So of course, what would we expect the third letter of the Bible to be? Exactly. We'd expect it to be an Aleph pointing to Abba, the Father. Let's have a look. Yes, Bere, the third letter of the entire Bible is an 
Aleph. And that is pointing to Abba. So we begin our Bible with three Hebrew letters. Ben, Resh, Aleph. Pointing to Ben, Son, Ruach, Spirit, Abba, Father. Why did God organize it that way? Now to you, most of you, especially if you're Christian, etc., this is all like don't be so facetious don't be so nitpicking what are you talking about I can see you saying that but the fact of the matter is if you are a Jew you have read entire books on why God began the Torah with Bet now we as Christians know exactly why he began it with Bet he began it because all things were through the Son yeah the Ben. God created everything for His Son, for His Mashiach. Everything in the universe was on behalf of the Son. Hallelujah. He is the central message of the Bible and so the Bible begins with Him. The last word of the Torah apparently is a Lamed and those two together you get Lamed Bet which is Lev Heart. The heart of the Word of God is the Son. Amen. Okay, we continue. Who created the heavens? Now, first we could look at this verb create. Bereshit, bara, Elohim. Now, we're going to just take the general, normal way of reading this. We're not going to go all Kabbalistic on you and, 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 and say, you know, uh, wait a minute. In the beginning, Bereshit, Bara, he created Elohim. Who created Elohim? No. We're just going to accept that. The, the verb Bara refers to the noun Elohim. But there's something special in this. Bara is a verb and it's a third person masculine singular uh, it took a bit of time for me to say uh, admittedly I don't remember it so easily but anyway now I'll remember it Bara, third person masculine singular Bara, he created but the noun Elohim which follows the verb here is noun masculine plural so what do we have here we have a singular verb combined with a plural noun. Immediately at the beginning of God's word, he puts together plurality and unity. He, in the beginning, he, God's almighty ones, created. Et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz the direct object the heavens and the direct object the earth so Trinity tells us that there is in the Godhead a unity a he but a plurality a father son and the Holy Spirit and the first verse in the entire Torah tells us Bara, third masculine singular verb to create Elohim noun masculine plural the plural in Hebrew is generally im we have s in English you know we would say God gods in Hebrew you might say Eloah Elohim it's a plural or El Elim the plural the S in Hebrew is the Yod and the Mem. Okay, now it's quite interesting. When I was uh, teaching in Israel for a little while, I had a class of uh, professional students teaching them a little bit of English. And one day I did a little class on Kabbalah and things like this. And I explained to them that Elohim was a plural 